Hello, my name is Bryn Klein, and we're going to do a short video on how to set and save your user settings, startup user settings, uh, with the Pico Automotive software. The first thing we're going to do is open the software. Now, we do not have a Pico scope attached, so we're going to get a, a prompt window pop up. Uh, it tells us that it does not f it did not find a device and ask us if we want to go into demo mode for this uh, tutorial we're just going to use the demo mode so once the pico s as this pico software gets started i want to talk about a couple things um, if you're watching this video most likely you're new to using the pico automotive software uh, maybe you've come from you know maybe you were familiar with the uh, other products and uh, we'll talk about one of the more common ones is a snap-on product I wanted to talk real quick about the differences between Pico and snap-on um, they're both great tools but they're to be used a little bit differently with snap-on products the time base which is the time on the screen is referred to sweep uh, that's the total time on the screen, which is referred to sweep. And Snap-on products and Snap-on users, uh, when they refer to time base, they're they're generally referring to the total time on the screen, which is the t sweep. In this case, uh, this is mil in milliseconds. You'll see this 20 right here. That indicates 20 milliseconds total sweep time. PicoScope users typically refer to time base as time per division, and you'll notice uh, that there's 10. Uh, 10 divisions uh, here in t 10 dividers uh, and so with Pico users we use it per division so in this case it's 2 milliseconds per division uh, so when we're referring to, to time base it's 2 milliseconds per division but if you're uh, using a snap-on or referring to time base with other snap-on users they use t uh, the term sweep or total time base which is in this case they would say 20 milliseconds total time or they would just say 20 milliseconds. Those are the, that's one of the differences uh, there. The other difference is with Snap-on products, you typically want to put less time on the screen. Uh, you fill your buffer. You'll see here this counting up. These are pages of information that it's saving in a buffer. So when you stop it, you can look back through all these different pages, and each page being. 10 milliseconds of time. With Snap-on, you typically want to put a little, a little time base on the screen. In this case, this would be one good example. Uh, 10 milliseconds sweep or 20 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds total time on the screen. You would fill the buffer or pages of information that it captured. You would zoom out and when you, once you zoomed out, you would see all, in this case it would be 31 pages then you would put like a marker or target on the area of, of, of the capture you want to analyze within those 31 screens then you would zoom in from there with Pico software we typically recommend putting a lot more time on the screen now some of the more common uh, settings are 20 or 200 milliseconds 500 milliseconds or one second per division I specifically like 500 milliseconds per division which gives me a total sweep time of five seconds um, be, if we put more time on the screen you're gonna wanna bump your sample rate up and I typically see one to two mil, million samples is what I have and I think most most um, uh, you know Pico users that are familiar with the product do the same because you're because you're putting a lot more time on the screen you want the sample rate bumped up and uh, usually one to two millisecond or two mil million samples is what uh, I use for most everything um, it's a good starting point anyways so you'll get your time you know your screen filled up you'll pause it and instead of you know with snap on filling a bunch of pages uh, and then zooming out and zooming back in because Pico you put a bunch of time on the screen and you can do that by the way because you have a higher sample rate with Pico um, than you do snap on um, but with Pico you put a lot more time on the screen it'll look like this 
uh, and then you'll just zoom in. So it's basically, it's very similar to the snap-on, it's just basically it's one less step. So you will hit this magnifying glass here and then you will drag and open a box like this to zoom in to whatever you want to analyze. And that's that's the two. The, in my opinion, that's the main difference between the two. There are a lot of different uh, differences, but with regards to some settings, that's the main difference, and basically how you use the tool. Um, so that's I wanted to touch on those two things real quick. The other thing I did want to mention is um, under tools and preferences, you can find in here you can find uh, here it is collection times if you're wanting to just you know you're familiar with the snap on sweep time and you kinda wanna use that you don't wanna change your mindset you know you don't wanna relearn a new system you can click change that basically with Pico you can change the total collection time instead of times per division um, I would recommend getting used to times for revision because that's one of the powerful things of Pico is you can share this uh, the files that you save you can share with other users and they're going to most likely be used to using terms um, in times per division or you know consider thinking of time as times per division as opposed to total collection time so we'll close out of there and uh, We'll talk real quick here. Um, ob obviously, this is a four-channel automotive scope, and you have A, B, C, and D. Those are your channels. Uh, I did speak about the sample rate. This is your sample rate, and then this is your time base. Um, most of what I'm seeing, and this is my, I'm just going to go ahead and set it up the way I'd like it and explain it, and you guys can change to whatever you like. But I like 500 milliseconds per division, which gives me five total seconds of sweep base time, or total time. 2 million samples. Once again, uh, this is a startup setting preset. You can change it uh, depending on what you're wanting to capture or what you're wanting to test. But with most automotive systems, obviously, you're looking at you know 12 volt systems. So I choose 20 volts for all my channels. And then with all my channels, uh, I will talk really quickly about the different uh, probes or and these are the built-in standard probes you can at later time we can talk about how to make custom probes but the, they have a lot of really good built-in probes already times one is if you were just checking a live circuit simply test you know connecting a test lead to check voltage on anything on the car that would be times one the times ten and times twenty we'll ref talk about here in just a moment uh... the first clamps here are their what we call low amp clamps and the, the clamps that are offered in the built-in are the 30 amp and then the 60 amp. The 60 amp has two modes. You have the 20 amp mode and the 60 amp mode. And depending on what you're wanting to look at, you choose that. Um, and I'm going to talk about the ones that I use, or the more common ones. The WPS 500 is um, the automotive pressure transducer, three transducers in one device. And there's three different ranges uh, for those different transducer pressures basically and the good news is on the pressure transducer itself it has a table and that table will help you to know what range you're going to want to choose um, for example range one is going to be up to 500 psi range two is uh, closer to like running intake manifold vacuum pressures and range three might be closer to cranking manifold vacuum pressures uh, once again, those pressures are listed on a table on the pressure transducer, so depending on what you're wanting to use, you would choose those tools based on that, or probes. Down toward the bottom, you have your higher amp clamps. The old, older kits used to come with a 600 amp clamp. The newer kits come with a 2000 amp clamp that has two modes, a 200 amp mode and a 20, 2000 amp mode. And then last down here, you'll have your secondary ignition probes uh, that you will choose to uh, acquire and analyze secondary ignition uh, waveforms. The time, the 20 to 1 and 10 to 1 attenuators, I, I'll talk on that real briefly. Basically, your Pico scopes have maximum, uh, you know, they have maximum specifications for the amount of voltage you want to, to put into that box. Basically, any signal that you're wanting to look at, 
you have to make sure that those signals produce less voltage than the maximum allowable uh, voltage on the box that you're using. For example, the 4423, which is the generation prior to what's being sold or supported now, that had a 100 volt maximum. So anything you wanted to look at on a car that had over 100 volts, you would use a 10 or 20 to 1 attenuator. And what that attenuator does is it reduces the actual voltage coming into the box 10 or 20 times. Um, so you have two choices when you're using attenuators. You can use the actual 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 attenuator probes, or you can use times 10 or times 20. We recommend using times 10 or times 20, and the reason is when you choose times 20 and you go into here, you, you can see how many options you have uh, for voltage settings. But if you use the 20 to 1, you can see there's far less options. So that's the reason we recommend using the times 10 or times 20. Uh, listen guys, if there's anything that I'm saying here you're not comfortable with or maybe you know something that I don't, please don't hesitate to comment and uh, you know everybody that's watching the video would benefit from those comments. But going back to what I like to use for settings, I choose for startup settings, I choose the times 1 on all my channels. The other things you can change are, you know, maybe you don't want to have all four channels uh, on when you start up. You maybe you want one or two. I often use all four channels, so I leave them on all on. So that's my settings uh, that I like when I when I open Pico software. Uh, that's how to change them, and so. I'm going to show you how to save them. If you go to File, Startup Settings, and Save User Default Settings, I uh, accidentally chose 100 here, so we'll click that back. I apologize. Startup Settings, Save User Default Settings. Now, that should have applied, but we'll close it out and check. Once it's closed out, we'll go ahead and reopen the Pico software and make sure that our user settings were saved. And as you can see, my 500 milliseconds per division, my 2 million samples, and my 20 volt range, my times one probe is all in there. Listen, guys and gals, thank you very much for watching. I enjoyed making the video. If you have any comments, please don't hesitate to, uh, to do so. Uh, others will benefit from it, I'm sure. Thank you.